Good evening and welcome back again. Hopefully you joined us in the first episode last time in which we got our Pairs 2021 Master League career underway with Malaga. We're in the second division of La Liga and we got off to a really good start with a 2-1 win against Ferradina. It was a, a longer episode because we did look through some transfers that we made, the setup of the formation and the team. We are playing with the original lineup, they're not real players, so we'll have a look through those. But we did get some interesting performances out of some players I didn't expect to be really any good. That was one really big positive, but we've also made some really interesting signings as well. Just looking at the schedule, we've got a week left in the transfer window, then we've got a gap followed by the first round of the Copa del Rey against Real Zaragoza. Now we are at home, but that's going to be a tough match. What we're going to do is we don't actually have any transfer. Well, we've got a transfer budget left, but we don't have any salary budget left. So in terms of incomings, I doubt there will be any. But if there is any update, obviously I'll drop in. We may get some offers for some of our players. Hopefully we will. We we'll have got quite a few of them up for sale because I think we need to trim down the squad, reduce our salary budget a bit, and hopefully we might be able to free up some signings, whether it's in this window or the January transfer window. Not really sure yet. Just to let you know, we have got an offer in for Kandamir, who was on the transfer list. Just looking at him, he is 32 years of age. He's actually one of our better defenders, and at 58, that's not really saying much. He's still pretty poor. We are going to accept it, and we're going to sign one of our youth team players who's, I think, actually rated either 59 or 60, so he's already a bit of an improvement. So yeah, as you can see here, Kvazovic is 59 rated, and I believe he's only 17. No, sorry, he's 18. Condition of 8, injury resistance 3, good physical contact. Obviously, he's pretty poor at the moment, but already he's a slightly better person than we just uh, sold. So just a bit of an update. We did do some contract negotiations with two of our youngest best players, Arkas and Castledean, and they've been successful now. So a bit of backwards and forwards, but we've actually managed to reduce both of their annual salary, increase the release fee amount, and then obviously increase their contract length as well. Arkas was actually up uh, next year, so we really need to tie him down. And he's probably the star of our original lineup. His uh, annual salary has been reduced by over 100 grand. Castledean, um, only about 50 or 60, but again, it's just tying them down to a longer contract as well. So we're gonna accept those. And we're actually now reached transfer day deadline. So what happens is you can actually basically skip forward one hour each time. And I think it's a maximum of 12 hours. If you do any negotiations, it knocks three hours off. I doubt we'll be doing anything, but again, we'll keep you updated or I'll just let you know once that day's been finished. So we've had an offer in for Canning from Ponferrina that we actually just played in the last match. We're going to accept that. It will release. It's not so much about the funds, but it might give us a little bit more salary budget. And just to let you know, we did put in a loan offer for Herrera from Girona and it's been accepted. Now, it's a fairly hefty transfer fee because he is a really good player. Mm -hmm. We've also got an option to buy in for 17 million on top of that fee. So you're looking at about 26 million overall. And the uh, the salary, I'm not 100% sure what the, the meaning of annual salary player bio is. I'm assuming that just means that if you do decide to take that option to buy, that's what a salary is going to be. Now, the issue is, is if we decide to take up that option to buy, we have to have not only the funds for the transfer, but the funds for the salary budget in place as well. We will have up until his loan ends to take up that option at any point. Hopefully, we'll get another million or so in the salary budget over the season. If not, he's going to be here just on loan for our first season and hopefully our only season in Division 2. But we are going to accept that. We've also got three offers in for our players. I think we're going to accept, assuming we have enough time, because I don't think we've got enough time for all three, but I think we're going to accept uh, Soric and Mayer, who's one of our goalkeepers. We've also got a, an offer in for Dryston, and we're going to accept that. We have got two hours left, so we can only do the one. Really, we're short on centre-backs, and we've got quite a lot of attack and talent, and Dryston, I don't think, is really going to fit in. Plus, his annual salary is slightly higher than Lagoida. So the transfer window did end with that um, remaining offer for Lagoida being cancelled because it was within that period. But subsequently, we've actually received two offers. So one for Hervey or Harvey and one for Geisler. Now, he's the only remaining goalkeeper besides the one we signed. But I am going to sell him and I am going to sell Harvey. We could always sign a goalkeeper from our youth team just as a backup. Now, in real life, you need normally two backup goalkeepers. In pairs, chances are you're never going to really need your backup goalkeeper, to be honest. But it's a lot safer to have at least one. 
Now, obviously, those signings won't actually go through until the 1st of January, so we'll keep them for now. But once that starts and they move over, that's probably when we'll sign our youth goalkeeper. We could do it in the meantime anyway, but I think I'll just put it on hold for now. And this is it. We're off to our second match in the series, and it's the first in the Copa del Rey, playing Real Zaragoza. I just checked, they won their first match as well. They won 1-0, they're in Division 2. We'll jump into the game plan to see what the conditions of the play is like. Let's hope that it isn't like last time where basically all of our new signings couldn't play apart from the goalkeeper. And this is the team going in with. Good news is that all of our star players, the ones we bought, are fully fit. They're on at least normal good conditions. We've made a couple of changes though. Rice is still on that flashing condition, which means he's improving rapidly. So we've brought him in. I was going to play Herrera as centre mid. I've dropped in him down to defensive midfield. He's still a 75. Rice is a 65. We've had to drop uh, Soufert, who was our right back. I brought in Coalfield at left back. And Gyoza, who I had at left back, randomly does play better at right back. I want to check something, actually, if I just change him for anyone. No, he is a right back anyway. So I'm not sure why he was playing at left back. I don't know if I've made a mistake there. Or oh, that was automatic, I'm not sure. But looks like a, a good lineup, and our guess is on, a, on an up as well. So, you know, let's just hope for a really good game, similar to the last one, but we'll need to tighten up that defence a little bit. And here we are. The Copa del Rey, the first round. Now, I'm not quite sure why, but we're not playing at our home ground, even though we're at home. Um, I don't know if the Copa del Rey have neutral fixtures, uh, neutral grounds for the fixtures. I wouldn't think so in real life, but maybe in the game it's always a neutral venue. Um, but there we go, Xerxes, a nice shot there, his first game, and he's taken it all in. Let's hope he gets on the score sheet in his first round. And like I say, we did um, we did alter the formation slightly since the last game. We've actually dropped the, the wing backs a little bit further back and a little bit tighter. Um, because I don't think that really works. We're just a bit too susceptible for counter-attacks. Here's Pavio Rivera's first touch on the ball. And it's not a great pass. But I think this midfield's going to be really special in this, uh, in this league. Oh, now that is a start. He didn't have the best first touch, but the second one was a lot better. Wow, what an impact Vieira's had there. Herrera linking up with Rice. Plays a fairly simple ball through, but that touch to take it out of his body, and he just laces it into the bottom left. Nice ball from Rice, because there's quite a few players around there. Lovely first touch, even better second, and wham, third touch, back of the net. Wonderful. That's what you call an impact. Careful. Now remember, we had a really good start in the last match. And a really good first half all round. And then in the second half, we let in a, a goal. It was actually a really good goal. And we just went downhill from there. We just, I don't know if we panicked or we just lost control of the game. Um, so, yeah, we need to stay on top and, and get that second. Yeah, oh. Went for a bit of a curler that time. Placement rather than power. And uh, maybe I should have just went for power. But I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. It's obviously only the second episode, but I think it's going to be a really good one. I think it's going to be a lot more difficult because we obviously start with the, the original lineup and all of that, and we're starting in Division 2 of the Spanish League. And, you know, if we do get promoted to Division 1 or whenever that is, it's going to be really difficult. That's when you'll see the step up in class from the opposition. And if we get through this round and maybe draw a bigger team, one of the ones in the uh, 
uh, Premier La Liga, you know. Let's focus on this game first, though, before we start thinking about the second round. Yeah, again, I've absolutely loved playing Pez 6. Really enjoyed that series, but, you know, just having a modern day fluid game, it's easier on the eye. It runs better than it did on my PC. This is on the PS5. Um, chance here. Well, good block. Nice interception from Herrera. Ah, just behind him. I don't think uh, has Xerxes had a touch of the ball apart from when he kicked off. Because he, he kicked the match off. I, I'm not sure he's had a touch since. Well, there we go. Nah, never going to get through there. But yeah, um, oh, hang on. Perez, and there it is. It's 2 0. His first game as well. Unfortunately, he couldn't play the last one, and actually, we had some really good displays on the right hand side in his absence. Lovely tackle, breaks it up, and just slots it in. Really calmly finished. Yeah, Pez 6 running on the PC, it's just a, it's an older game, and I think it's certainly not my actual actual laptop, because it's a really uh, powerful laptop. It can run, like, most, if not all, modern games pretty well. Um, hang on. Oh, just slipped over his heat, took it. Oh, and again, that was his first chance. He did fall over, it was just behind him. Maybe the conditions are a little bit wet because he falls over there. He's got the wrong studs on or something. And he falls over again. But we'll probably will go back to the Pez 6 career mode at some stage, the Master League. Uh, you know, we ended it in Season 2 and it was really successful. But we will pick that up at some point, I'm sure. Rice has been on the ball a lot. He's been the best player so far. Three nil, and the two goal scores combine there. A nice little one two. I think we're gonna have to up the difficulty. I mean, I'm playing well, but um, I found the first match really tough. You know, we we just won that one but this one's uh, yeah nice little one too anyway lovely little touch there and kills it on the keeper and this is what I like about yeah when I look at his stats it seemed to be a player that had some good finishing attributes some you know can play some killer passes but seems to be good in um, tight situations as well that tight control and balance he's going to be a, a star I think for our team but yeah we can take it a little bit easy now just keep the ball we don't have to rush anything and I think changing the formation slightly is, it's and not that they've shown much attack and threat, but it's definitely shored up the, the defence and stopped the counter-attack. Just trying to find him. But there it is, it's half-time. We'll have a quick look at the stats, actually. So 65% possession... Six shots, four of them on target, and three of them went in. So, yes, we dominated the game, but we were clinical. That was the main thing, really. And you can see there, just looking at the actual goals, Rice got an assist for Vieira's first goal. Then Perez was classed as a solo goal. He then assisted Vieira for his second. 
Now I think they might want to make some changes sometime soon. I certainly would if I was their, their manager. But really positive first half and we've got the luxury now where we can actually make some changes relatively soon in the in the second half to rest some players if we want to. Oh, nearly four. He hasn't seen much of the ball, Zerxi, but he's now had a couple of chances. That was on his unfavoured left, but manages to stay on side. Nice movement. Decent first touch. Just slotted wide, though. And I would say, looking at his stats, you know, his finishing isn't great for a centre forward. That will come in time. He is a very young player, so we don't expect him to be clinical at this age. See that a mile off, but I just couldn't do anything about him. But wing mix on the quick hist. Oh, nice tackle there. And it could be on the counter attack. Yes, you can see there's not really anyone in support at the moment. Manages to keep a hold of it though. Ooh, yeah, we just lost it there. I think that's the first time um actually no Vieira his first touch he did uh, first touch in the match he did um put body didn't he nice little triangles of passing oh good effort and um so he just couldn't quite get on the end of it oh it's a bit of a sloppy pass though Ah, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to make some changes though. So we are going to take off Fabio Vieira, Carlos Perez and Zirkzee, bring on Bichet, Harrington and Gios, just to give those players a bit of a rest, but they've played really well. It's a shame for Zirkzee, he couldn't get his goal. Had a couple of chances, wasn't massive in the game, a lot of the plays being out wide and sort of bypassed him a little bit, but he certainly hasn't had a bad game in the slightest. And it looks like he's going to be on the winning side. Unless something disastrously goes wrong. And Harridan's playing out wide. That's not his favourite position, but I wanted to give a run out there just to see what he's like. Pierre's first touch of the ball. Into Gios. I think that's how you pronounce it. Bit of a poor ball though, but he um, just got into the game. Just need to keep the ball really, stay relaxed, don't do anything daft. Shouldn't say that, really, should I? Nice ball to Bajer there. Ah. Yeah, Gears' passing is clearly not that great. It's two uh, passes he's put straight. That's a good one there, though. Oh, nearly four. Nearly four. Got him through there. Herrera was looking to get on the attack. And that should be our throw in. It is. Herrera's had a decent game as well. Not as obviously spectacular as the other guys, but he's playing more of a whole midfield role anyway. So he's just there sitting, tidying everything up, playing some simple passes, keeping things ticking over. Not long left now though. 
great if we could get a fourth. Rice. Ah, good block. That should go for corner and it will. It was a nice ball into to Rice there and he had a good opportunity but pretty much straight at the defender. Bit of a strange ball. That deflected again off the defender. But all in all, this has been a very, very comfortable game. Could have had more goals, but we haven't been wasteful, I wouldn't say. I don't even remember them having a, an attack as such. Rice. Oh, decent strike with his left. Straight at the keeper, but he's hit the target. He's hit it pretty cleanly. Just need to be careful. There's a bit of space opening up here. Good cover from Caulfield, and that's what difference it makes not having the wing backs pushed up so much. And there it is, it's full time, really, really good result. We're through to the second round. Pretty flawless match, really. And just looking at the stats 63% possession, 11 shots with 8 of them on target. So, we're pretty clinical in terms of hitting the target. Scored 3 of those, and you can see we almost doubled the amount of successful passes. And just looking at the ratings, really good ratings all around. It's very hard to get good ratings for your keeper and defence unless they're making lots of tackles, saves, etc. When you're on top of the game, generally, your keeper and defence really don't get very good ratings. Vieira man the match, not really surprised with the two goals he scored and Perez getting seven and a half as well. Yeah, just really good all round. Cher got on the ball a few times, he looked decent. Harrington wasn't in the game too much either. Just really, really good first, uh, first game in the Copa del Rey though. But that's it for today, guys. The next match we've got is an away match uh, at Huesca, who I believe won their first match in the Liga as well. So we're back in the league. Can we keep this run going? Three points in the league. We're through to the second round in the Cup. Some really good performances all around, and the new guys have absolutely smashed it. Really appreciate the support again. If you can, drop a comment down below. That would be, be great. I love interacting with you guys. So any feedback you want to give, any sort of players that you would like me to, to sign or at least have a look at, I'll certainly take that into consideration. Subscribe if you can. It'll keep you up to date with any time I upload videos. And um, leave a like if you did enjoy the video. But just thank you very much for joining. And I'll see you all soon.